All right, everybody, we got Captain Kirk fighting the devil himself. Let's go. All right, everybody, in light of it being the Shatner's 90th birthday, or damn well close to it, I thought we'd take a look back at one of his little gems from 1975, The Devil's Reign. Before we go any further, before we dig into this gem anymore, once and again, and as always, to the trailer. There have been films about earthquakes, airplane disasters, and blazing infernos. But there has never been anything like The Devil's Reign. His face. That wasn't your father. It was his face. <laughs> No faces. The Devil's Reign. The 300 year search for the power to damn mankind is over. Fools! And the towering terror of the Devil on Earth is now unleashed. The Devil's Reign. Hundreds of souls held captive in an eternity of hell. Seize him! Possessed by the devil. You, my son, have defiled all that is holy. Mother, my God, my God! They become his worshippers and his demons. Rain, starring Academy Award winner Ernest Borgnine, Eddie Albert, William Shatner, Keenan Wynn, and Ida Lupino as Mrs. Preston, and with the special participation of Anton LaVey, High Priest of the Church of Satan. The Devil's Reign, conceived by the producer of A Man Called Horse. Created by the masters of magic of Planet of the Apes. Together, they bring you a melting hell on Earth. And absolutely the most incredible, unforgettable ending of any motion picture ever. Heaven help us all when the devils reign. All right, this motion picture was directed by Robert... Faust. Mm, that, ah, let's go. Anyway, he's directed things like Weathering Heights. He did the abominable Mr. Phoebes, and Mr. Phoebe Rides Again, and Soon the Darkness, and some TV stuff, you know, The Optimist, some ABC after school specials, and really he did a lot, a lot, a lot of episodes of The Avengers. And how cool is that? So, He's not a name that's going to jump out at you. It's not going to be like you're hearing Spielberg or Carpenter. But did his thing, was around, made some shit. Let's roll. All right. Starring as Corbus, Ernest Borgnine. You know we all love the Borgnine. Let's hit this shit. We're talking about he has been in gems like Barabbas, The Dirty Dozen, The Wild Bunch. Marty, uh, Willard, The Poseidon Adventure, oh god, I love that movie, and The Black Hole, and Super Fuzz, which is, was shit, but I love it anyway, and Hanny Calder, and The Vikings, and he was on TV, in uh, Mikhail's Navy, and of course on Airwolf, where he teamed up with String from the Hawk, and to me, most of all, he will always be Cabby from Escape from New York, how the fuck can he not be? Playing Dr. Richards, hmm? Eddie Albert. 
what's in it? We're talking about he has been in stuff like The Longest Yard, which, oh my God, just amazing. In McHugh, in Escape to Witch Mountain, and How to Beat the High Cost of Living, in the Concord Airport 79, and Take This Job and Shove It, in Dreamscape, in Hustle, in Roman Holiday, and of course, he was on a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of TV shows. Most notably, we're all going to remember it. Green Acres, come on, with fucking Jaja Ava, whatever the Gabor's fucking chick, I can't remember. Let's keep moving. Playing Mark. Oh boy, this is the one we were waiting for. Our little birthday guy, the Shatner, William Shatner himself. Let's kick this in the gear. Obviously, he's been in motion pictures. We're talking about he has been in things like Big Bad Mama and Kingdom of the Spiders, which I already reviewed and you know I love, and Airplane 2. And he was on TV a lot in Twilight Zone and uh, 77 Sunset Strip and The Defenders and For the People and Dr. Kildare and The Virginian. And we all know he's always going to be remembered for two iconic roles, probably the most. I mean, he was T.J. Hooker in the 80s on TV and, come on man, it's Captain Kirk. Whether it was three years on the TV or 20, 30 years of it in the movies, he will always be James Tiberius Kirk forever in hell, folks. That's not a bad thing to be. Playing Tom. Tom Scarrett. Yo, we all love the Scarrett. Let's kick this shit into gear. We're talking about he has been in all-time gems like Top Gun and MASH and Space Camp and The Big Town and Ice Castles, that little forgotten flick from years ago, and The Dead Zone. And Poltergeist 3, well, take that for what it's worth. And Steel Magnolias, and Poison Ivy, and The Rookie, and uh, uh, sing uh, Singles, and uh, A River Runs Through It. And of course, he'll always be Dallas from Aliens. That's a bunch of crap. I just want to get off this rock. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, mm. playing Julie. Joan Prather. One thing you're going to remember her from. But there's others. Let's roll. We're talking about she has bad and stuff like Big Bad Mama. Where she was actually in it with, with Tom Scarrett again. And they had like a whole sex scene and shit. It was like weird. They were two movies together. Oh, it doesn't matter. Whatever. And Rabbit Test. But really, she was mostly TV. Uh, Eight is Enough. Uh, Executive Suite. Chips. Uh, Love Boat. Fantasy Island. Uh, the Quest. And really, really. And she was in, and she was in movies like... Uh, 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 the Single Girls, and she was in uh, Take This Job and Shove It. I almost forgot about those movies. Jesus, just popped in my head. Also, though, really, her, her claim to fame will always be eight is enough. I mean, she's the eight is enough person. So, it is what it is. Let's keep going. Okay, playing Miss Preston, Ida Lupino. I mean, Jesus Christ, her career started way back in the day. Let's keep going. She was in stuff like High Sierra, and Sea Devils, and Anything Goes, and Let's Get Married. In the Sea Wolf, in a uh, uh, a Deep Valley, in the Hard Way, in uh, uh, Ladies in Retirement, and she was in a gem of a movie that I keep saying I'm going to review, but I just haven't gotten around to it. <sighs> Food of the Gods. Food of the God. Uh, if you've if you've never seen it, you know what. I'm, if you have seen it, you know. Well, I would never forget it. Okay, there's also a bunch of other people in this motion picture that you should know about. I mean, Jesus, I just talked about Keenan Wynn in my last episode with Piranha. He makes a little pop-up in this thing, and how cool is that? We're talking about John Travolta before he was anybody. And you might not recognize him at first, but look for him. He's in this thing. And Claudio Brook from, you know, he was in goddamn movies like The Bees and The Devil's Garden. He's in this thing. And Woody Chambliss, I mean, we're talking about, he was in so many westerns and The Andy Griffith Show. So... There's faces in this thing that pop up and have bit parts. Is what it is. You can't beat it. Okay, everybody, we're gonna try to do this in 90 seconds or less so we can get fast, keep it moving, keep it entertaining, and so we can get to the part where we'd all rather be the summation. You have the Preston family. They have this little ranch house, call it whatever the hell you want, out in the middle of the desert, in the middle of goddamn nowhere, and there's a torrential rainstorm coming down, and risk. Preston is looking for her husband, and she doesn't know where he is. Then, out of nowhere, her son comes home, played by one James Tiberius fucking Kirk William Shatner himself. And he's trying to console his mother, saying, Mom, don't worry, he'll be home. That's just caught up in the rain. Everything will be fine. All of a sudden, they hear some noise outside. They go out there to look, and what do they find? Dad's home. But 
He's dripping. He's melting. He's decaying. His eyes are missing. And he's screaming some shit about Corbus and a book and a book and Corbus. And you're going to have no idea what's going on, but that's fine. So the son goes into the house. She shows the son the book. This book. He's like, I'm not taking the book to Corbus. The hell with Corbus. What's going on with Corbus? You don't know yet. It's okay. Next thing you know, he says, I'll deal with Corbus. Grabs his 45 and he heads down to the local ghost town where Corbus himself is hanging out. They have a confrontation. They have a meeting. And he says, my faith is better than your faith. And before you know it, they go into this church. You're like, what the hell's going on? Until you see this is a battle between the forces of Satan and the forces of, well, good, bad. I don't know what the hell you want to call William Shatner and his clan. There's some sketchy shit going on. Either way, he winds up getting sucked into this and kind of, well, you know, just disappears. Enter his brother, Tom Skerritt. Tom Skerritt's got a wife who has ESP, and she has a doctor that works with her and him about her ESP. And it's a big scientific study. Whatever the fuck you want to call it. Who knows? Well, long story short, I'm not going to give you the whole thing, but they go to investigate what the hell happened to the clan, what the hell happened to his brother, what's going on, and how is this all in relation to this Corbus? How is the family related to this Corbus who's getting revenge upon people? that were, let's just say, earlier in the family tree. And he's kind of exacting a little bit of revenge about some people, you know, burning them at the stake and doing some shit. You know, it is what it is. You get it. The powers of evil coming back, looking for a book, punishing those who betrayed him decades earlier, possibly centuries, and seeking revenge on those families and those groups and those cliques and raising all kind of hell and capturing their souls and all this looking shit. Whatever, 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 whatever. You get the fucking idea. It is, it's one of those. Okay, everybody. What makes this motion picture work? And it does work. Is it amazing? No. But it's fun, it's good, and it works. And let's get to why. First off, this motion picture is one of those motion pictures that doesn't really tell you what's taking place for a long time. In the beginning of this motion picture, you're going to probably be a little bit frustrated and a little bit confused, like, what the hell is taking place? I don't get it. Who is this Corvus? Nothing really gets explained to you until about 45 minutes in. So if you hang with the movie for that long, finally it'll make some sense and you'll get an understanding of what's going on. Let's get the junk out of the way. Directing-wise, it looks good. It's shot fine. The desert scenes look beautiful. Everything's framed well. It's a style of directing that I really like, and that is simple. Kind of a Carpenter style or a Howard Hawk style. Simple. Tell the story. No trick shots. No bullshit. I like directors like that. They don't screw around. They don't play games. They just give you the goddamn movie. They give you the story, and it is what it is. The writing, eh, it's fine. It works. It does what it's supposed to do. It's this kind of a motion picture. Actually, I mean, they really go into the whole devil rituals and shit like that. And for some reason, I guess just for marketing, they brought that LeVay fucking character in there to oversee and make sure they're saying the right goofy shit. Either way, I mean, it makes the scenes kind of better, I guess. And finally, the acting. If there's any acting in this that's really going to put it over the top, really, I think the one who delivers the most in this motion picture is Ernest Borgnine. He is just awesome as Corvus. He's devilish. You know he's got like a trick up his sleeve at all times. He's a little bit creepy. He really, really brings it. Shatner? You know it's Shatner. There's times he's really good and then there's times he's like, oh, God, how? Oh. And he's doing the Shatner shit. But it's the reason you love Shatner. Because Shatner doesn't even take the Shatner seriously. And it's just the way it goes. Tom Skerritt, very early in his career, brings it, delivers it. What more could you want? And Eddie Aller, been around for four million years. You know what I'm talking about. The guy was in a million things, starred in a million little shows or a million little movies. Good actor, solid, is what it is. But let's get back on track about why this motion picture works again. It's one of those motion pictures like I stated a few moments ago. It leaves you confused for a little bit. And that's one of the things that kind of makes the movie work. You're kind of like, you always feel like you're playing catch up, like you're not really sure what the hell is going on, which is really the point of view of the Tom Skerritt character and his wife and the doctor. They really seem to be completely lost compared to the rest of the family who seems to know more about what's going on. I mean, the mom, the dad, Mark Shatner, they all seem to know what's going down with this Corvus guy. The Tom character seems to be like, 
I don't really know. I guess he was just a child that never got the information. Just he didn't get the fucking story. I don't know why, but you're coming at it from his point of view. You're discovering things as they go along and trying to figure the whole thing out. And all that, with the directing style, lends to a slight degree of unease and creepiness in the motion picture. Not a lot. I mean, it's not like a Halloween-esque type masterpiece, but they do hit on that. They do give you that feel. They do give you that vibe. And for that, it works, and you can't knock it. Other problems with a motion picture like this? Oh, come on, man. Jeez, you know, come on. Yes, there's going to be problems with a motion picture like this. They did some of the stereotypical stuff that you see coming down the pipe with a low-budget flick that's a little bit on the cheesier side, like when they stack all the credits in the beginning of the motion picture to stretch the one hour and 20-something minute time light out a little bit. Because this is a short flick, folks. It's like an hour and 26 minutes. It's not really long. And you realize the first four and a half minutes are just every credit in this motion picture from the guy that scrubbed the toilet and the porta potty to the caterers it all takes place in the beginning over a bunch of scary photos and like four minutes in you're like jesus god can we get to the movie what is it with the credits and shit i mean but that's a trick that they always do in low budget flicks to make it seem a little bit longer than it really is and are there a few plot holes here and there yeah yeah but nothing so egregious is going to pull you out of the motion picture i mean you got to take it for what it is. You know, you already dipped your foot into this pond. If a minnow bites your toe, don't be shocked. You know what I'm saying? It's just one of those kind of motion pictures. But for that kind of motion picture, the plot holes ain't that bad. It kind of moves straight along. And you just have to roll with the fact that his Tom Skerritt's wife has ESP and all this other kind of goofy shit. It's, it's out there. But all that being said, this is a gem of a little flick that I almost hear nobody, and I mean nobody, ever discussed. It's like this motion picture either didn't take place, or gets forgotten about, or just gets wasted away in the annals of time, and nobody ever talks about it, and I just don't know why. It was good, it was effective, it was relatively fun, decent to look at, good enough acted. It's one of those movies that deserves more love than it ever got, and that's why I'm talking about it here, because it deserves good watching. Oh, 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 I almost forgot. One last thing. Believe it or not, this motion picture is rated PG to show you how far things have changed in the world. When you watch this movie, keep in mind this is a rated PG movie. There is satanic stuff going all over this motion picture. There are sacrifices going on in this motion picture. There are people melting, disintegrating, and fall apart all over the place in this motion picture. PG used to get a lot of leeway back in the days. Today, never so much. But back then, you could really go to town in a PG movie and kind of get away with a lot. As long as there wasn't a lot of boobs or foul language, well, basically everything else kind of went. And this motion picture shows that totally. Anyway, everybody, get out there. Check out The Devil's Reign. You can find it on YouTube. You can find it on Amazon. It's all over the friggin' place. It's worth a watch. Good mood. Good vibe. Keeps you semi in suspense. Takes a while before it introduces what the hell's taking place. But in the end, you watch a good flick that's entertaining. And you've only spent an hour and 26 minutes of your time or some shit like that. Whatever it is, have fun, enjoy, check it out. But most of all, be good, take care, stay out of trouble, help a friend, be kind to a stranger, but above all else, under no circumstances, at any time. Take any bullshit from anybody. See you soon.